The reason I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad was because I knew this time was coming. And we have, as a world, have never been here before. And so is it a spooky time? Damn yeah, it is, a, it is probably the most dangerous time ever, 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 ever. There's, there's nothing to compare it to because there's never been a world economy before. For example, you know, a hundred years ago, if there was a stock market crash in England, it didn't affect anybody. Mm. But now the US market goes down, the world goes down. So plus with social media and all this we're doing now, and so we've never been here before. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it because I make more money in crashes than I do when they go up. So, but for the average person, they'll get wiped out. I'm afraid at the worst, I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're heading for a global depression. How does this play out for the average worker, Robert, for the small business owner? I mean, what does the next three months look like? Because it doesn't look pretty. I mean, people are already being laid off, made redundant. Businesses are, there's no cash flow in most of these businesses. How does that play out? Well, let me give one, one more step just to give you the size of it, okay? The national debt for World War II was 25 billion. Every day today, every day they're printing 125 billion. Every single day, that's like five World War II's per day, they're printing so much money to keep this, this think of a hot air balloon with a tear in it. And they're doing desperately trying to fix this tear, but it, no matter how hard they try, the tear has gone beyond, it's coming down. So in, in financial terms, it's called our debt to deep GDP has now gone from 60 to 90 to 105, it's going to 120. We're bankrupt. And they're gonna print more and more money, which means savers are losers, just as I predicted. Your money is gonna be worthless in a few years. Wow. So my message is the same as some of your other guests, this is metamorphosis type. Financial education in Rich Dad's terms is really financial transformation. And the definition of metamorphosis is very important. Metamorphosis, the definition is the evolution or the transformation from an immature form to an adult form. An immature form to an adult form. Metamorphosis is the same as a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. And Fuller always said there's nothing to predict a butterfly inside a caterpillar. So everybody listening right now, if you're struggling financially, just think of yourself as a little caterpillar. And this crisis is your cocoon. The question is, what do you emerge as? Do you emerge as a victim? You know, the world did that to me and the, the capitalists are crook and the rich are bastards and all this stuff. Or do you say, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. The same as my health. I am ground zero for the coronavirus. All that it does is inspire me to get healthier. You're either gonna get healthier and wealthier, or you're gonna go bust. Your choice. It sits between your ears, your heart, your body, your mind, your spirit, your attitude. This could be the best thing that ever happened to you, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if you turn on to a butterfly, or somebody will step on you like a little worm. <laughs> it's your choice. Now, if you're in trouble today, my message is not so kind. This is hard talk, not happy talk. The crisis is in your head. Now that's the bad news. <laughs> the good news, you can change the crisis by changing what's inside your head. And so I'm doing, I hate to brag, but I'm doing extremely well financially today because as I was warning everybody, this crisis was coming, but it would be, it would be irresponsible of me to warn people of the crisis and not personally make changes myself. So right. the good news is the crisis is in your head, the bad news is in your head. The most important thing you can have right now is not job security, but meaningful work. So you and I don't need the money, but our work is meaningful. And it's our meaningful work that gets us through the hard times. So the good news is my company is sold out. We cannot keep up with product. The bad news is the supply chain shut down, but that's a good problem. We have tons of cash. I have gold, I have silver. And I do have challenges in the real estate market, but that's gonna make me stronger. 
That's my only attitude I can have. Otherwise, I just cry and say, well, the government should take care of me. I need a bailout, I need a stimulus. So what can I do? I'm one of them, what do I do? Does it go back to employee, self-employed business owner, investor, like go find a business, go start a business, go reposition yourself career-wise? You know, is there a, a, a one, two, three step process on what I can do to be prepared for it? I have a friend in Panama. He has an avocado farm. So he's sitting in Panama growing avocados. He says, because people have to eat. Another guy's friend of mine is growing blueberries. But another friend of mine, he moved up to, he was from Seattle, excuse me. He had a big house, his kids all moved out. So he converted the kids' bedrooms into one bedroom apartments. So he put a kitchen and he put a toilet inside his little bedrooms. And so he now rents out four bedrooms. He's making more money today than ever before because a lot of workers commute to Seattle. So they come in, they check in. They come in on Sunday night, they check out Friday afternoon. It's a little house, he's making more money. So the point is, everybody can do something, but you gotta figure out what you can do. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income, earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income, because I'm working for it. If I buy, a, if I buy a, let's say, Apple for $10, and I send it for 20, that's uh, portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. So it's not, and so all these guys are screaming right now in America, taxed or rich, I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know there's three kinds of income, and the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, you know, sent the kid to school, they don't learn this. So that's why in fake, as you were talking about it, there's that newspaper article about Jared Kushner. Yeah. And he explains how the Trumps and the Kushners don't pay taxes and make millions of dollars. And the reporter couldn't understand him because they're not, our schools will never teach you that three types of income. And they judged him and say they're wrong and it's cheating. And we see that over and over again, Amazon not paying taxes. What do you say to people when they come up to you and say, Robert, it's not fair. It's not fair they're not paying taxes. Well, there's always three sides to a coin, you know, heads, tails, and the edge. You know, so which side of the coin are you on? From my side, it's fair. But this is the difference. Everybody can do the same thing I do, because the tax laws are for everybody. You know, we don't say, well, the tax laws are only for the rich, no. The tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. That takes, and my rich dad taught me that playing Monopoly, that's how it started, you know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. Or the McDonald's formula, I write about it here. McDonald's, Ray Kroc. Yeah. McDonald's is in the real estate business, so they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate, so they pay no taxes. You know, this guy Bezos, well, he's $16 billion. How much tax did they pay on that 16 billion? Zero. And that's all legal. Anyone can do it. Everybody can do but it. But everyone, most people lack the education. Correct. So Jared learned about money when he was a kid by Correct. watching his father, by watching these people invest in real estate and said, wow, not only do you get to make the money, you get to keep the money. That's a big problem a lot of people don't understand. They, ah, oh, look how much money I made, but how much did you keep? Because that could be half. How much tax did you pay? And so well, you always say, this is the law. The law is true for every citizen. You can do it, but most people just don't do it. Sometimes, like you said, they don't have the education, but you need to have a plan if you're gonna go do risky things. Well, it's not risky. I mean, to me, what's, what's risky is having a job and paying taxes yeah. and saving money because they're printing it. You know, that's the worst thing of all. And that's why there's fake money fake teachers, because the teachers will never, they don't know it. Right. And fake assets, because Wall Street or the City of London or Lehman Brothers or Goldman and all, they're not gonna tell you this. 